Holiness, holiness, holiness. There we go. Um, it's kind of interesting this morning as I was, I was going through this because I was so trying to decide where we go after we do the holiness. And uh, uh, Ephesians kept popping into my main, into my main, into my mind. Sometimes I feel like I'm wearing a main. Um, and, and um, which is really funny because uh, part of what I, everything we're going to look at this morning comes out of Ephesians. So, so, so maybe, uh, okay, we're not going to Ephesians, we go someplace else because we're already going to talk about it. Uh, practical holiness. Um, practical holiness is, is more defined uh, as a relational holiness. Um, there's a, 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 a doctor by the name of, uh, uh, I believe it's Judy uh, Hoffman, who um, wrote a, a, a chapter in a book called uh, Be Holy uh, that the Wesleyan Church has put out uh, many years ago. And so a lot of this comes from, from her idea and, and things that, that I definitely agree with when we start talking about relational holiness. And so it, here's one of the things that she says. She goes, Relation, relational holiness, human wholeness born out of God's perfect love, which transforms us so that we can love God and others with divine love. I like that. Transforms us. It's what's supposed to happen. In this process, we become who God designed us to be, fully human and fully partnered at God's invitation into intimate family relationship with the Trinity. How often do you think about that, that we are partnered with God? We, 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 we know that we're children of God, but it's more than that. It's a partnership. He's called us to do that. Um, and we're going to talk more about that. Again, in this process, we become who God designed us to be, fully human and fully partnered at God's invitation into intimate family relationship with the Trinity. Wow. Say, so we'll talk more about that partnership because it's, that's part of this this uh, relational, relational uh, holiness that, that we're looking at. So we'll jump right in. It says here, uh, you know, there, there was there was a time in the in the church we we, we the pendulum always swings, and it, it, I don't know why it never goes halfway. It always swings to one side and swings to the other side. Um, many of you probably remember the do's and don'ts of the Wesleyan Church, probably the Pilgrim Holiness Church, the Nazarene Church. Some of the do's: do wear long sleeves, men. You can't wear short sleeves. I have no idea why. I never figured that one out. Hmm? How about this one? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, do wear short hair, men. Uh, we probably came out of the 60s and 70s, I would imagine there. And I know the comment that the long-haired guys would say, well, Jesus had long hair. Hmm? How about this one? Ladies, do make sure your dress covers your knees. What does that got to do with holiness? And yet that is what people look at. If you were holy, these are the things you ascribed to. These are the things that you did. Huh? How about the don'ts? The don'ts. Don't wear jewelry. Huh? How about this one? Don't wear makeup or pants, ladies. I always have to wear a dress. Hmm? How about this one? Don't dance, play cards, or watch TV. Those are all works of the devil. And any more they might be, huh? But you get the idea. What, what, what did we looked at just, uh, uh, oh, I guess it was quite a while ago now, we looked at Paul talking about uh, the, the, the laws that were set up that once we become Christians, that, that we no longer uh, listen to those laws. I mean, the laws are there, they're good, they're great, but Jesus Christ is what we focus on. And if we're talking about being holy, these things do not make us holy. Just because you play, don't play cards, does that make you holy? Just because you don't watch TV, does that make you holy? It's not about something that somebody can see outside. The actions that we do are what's happening from inside. And so the do's and don'ts really didn't make any difference. And so we've gone from, from that do's and don'ts, unfortunately, we've gone to the other end, and we don't know what holiness is anymore. Wow. Wow. So that's kind of where we're, where we're, we're looking. That's why we've brought this up. I, 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 again, I, I hope you're getting something out of this and, and how important holiness is. Ephesians offers a, a, a compact a summary of relational holiness. Um, it, it's really uh, fantastic when we, when we get into this. So, so uh, Dr. Hoffman says that there, there are four, four e essentials here. Uh, uh, maybe we'll get to them. Thank you. Okay. So you're not doing it? Oh, okay. Mine says there's an error. Uh, so go ahead and, and do me one. No, go one forward. 
<laughs> I love this. Put me on there. <laughs> yeah, I've got it. The, the term God is the model of holiness. Okay. Uh, the second thing is God's love for us is the power of relational holiness. The third thing is relational holiness is characterized by God's offer to partner with humans. And then the last one is living well together. So let's just jump right in. Uh, that God is the model of holiness. It says uh, Ephesians 1, chapter 1, verse 4. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Think about that. God chose us to be holy. He chose us to be set apart. He chose us to be used by him. He chose us to be blameless. Wow. After all, he didn't make Adam and Eve and say, okay, now that you've sinned. Uh, he put them in the garden, right, and told them not to eat of the tree. It was, it was their, their downfall that, that they did. Uh, regardless of whether you think it was all Eve's fault or, hey, Adam had a free choice in that matter too. For he chose, he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Now this isn't working, huh? <laughs> this is going to be one of those days. Wow. Okay. <laughs> in love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship. Again, don't get hung up on that predestined thing that, that, that we think about with other denominations. Predestined. We all predestined. If we have kids, we predestined them to do something. All right? I predestined uh, that my, my boys would, would uh, uh, go to college and they would, they would really make something of themselves. My dad predestined that I would be a basketball player. I never liked basketball. It wasn't until just the last year or so that I've gotten into high school basketball. So the predestined thing doesn't work, does it? That's just something that we want to happen. So when we start talking God predestined us, don't think that we don't have to do anything because it's all done. No, this is what he wanted for us. He wanted us to be adopted into sonship, into his family. That's what he predestined. We have that free choice. Isn't that a shame? Because with that free choice is when we fall. He loved us. He predestined us for adoption and sonship through Jesus Christ. In accordance with his pleasure and will. To praise, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us, in the one he loves. Wow. <laughs> oh, I hope the week's not going to be this way too. Ephesians 5.1 Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children. Follow God's example. The example that's set apart for us. The, we, we look at the, the Trinity. That should be our, our model. The Trinity. How does God relate to the Holy Spirit? How does the Holy Spirit relate to Jesus? How does that relate to us? So it says, it says <laughs> don't touch. <laughs> I know, I think it's this thing is sticking. Be, I have no idea where we're at now. <laughs> Follow God's example. Here's, here's one of those places where I think the NIV is not as strong as the King James. Okay? Because it says here, follow God's example. Uh, follow. That, that means, okay, I should be following you, but you know, I can still get off on the wrong path. I've had my boys th follow me in other vehicles through, through the streets of Chicago. We all got separated. We called each other. Okay, get on this interstate. This is where we're wanting to go. Okay, we meet up later. That's a follow. Here's, what, here's how they, the, the, the New King James puts it. Be imitators. Imitators. That means you should look and sound. Yeah, you, anybody remember uh, Rich Little? Probably not. <laughs> he was he was a, he was a uh, 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 he would person He was an impersonator. He impersonate you know John Wayne and and, and all the rest of, the rest of these Frank. Uh, Frank Gershon was another one. Um, and they sound like they do the mannerisms. They do the walks. They do all these things. You are to be imitators of God. We are to be imitators of God. And part of that imitating is doing what? Is to love one another unconditionally. Wow. Be imitators of God as dear children. I've told you that there are uh, uh, times down at, at camp in Rapid City, especially after uh, Jason went to, to college, when they would come back to do something for the, for, the, uh, uh, for the camp, that people would think it was me walking up ahead of them. Because he walks and looks, well, I don't look as thin as he does now, but he walks the same way that I walk. And he's, you know, he's taller than I am. But, but from the distance, it would look exactly the same. 
I used to get, uh, get calls when I, when I lived at home, and people thought I was my dad because the voice was exactly the same. I've had people accuse me of, of uh, imitating his signature. That's because he wrote sloppily. I write sloppily, too. Mine had to do with it, signing aircraft forms all the time. His had to do with signing forms for the, for the uh, theater all the time. So our, our, it's the, there are things that we do we are imitators of. We are to be imitators of God. The Father entrusted Jesus with an earthly mission of restoration. You think about this, so we, we, we look at that, that relational relationship, that, 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 <laughs> that uh, re, relational holiness between the Father and Jesus. God trusted his Son so much, so much, that, that he sent him to earth for our restoration. Sent him to earth that we might be able to be saved. The Holy Spirit was directed to be our keeper after Jesus returned to heaven. Remember that the, the, we were told to, to hold on, to, to, to hang loose and, and stay until the Holy Spirit came upon us and he would give us power and would keep us. So here's what Ephesians 1 says. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promise of the Holy Spirit. So we believe in Jesus Christ. That, that, that we believe in Him. That marks us with the power of the Holy Spirit. It, it seals us. Uh, that, that guarantee. Says, uh, continues on. Who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are in God's possession. I love that verse. Who is a deposit? Who is a deposit that guarantees our inheritance? Anybody ever collect bottles and take them in after after the you know the, the old time? I think you do it with cans now in some states. Yeah, I used to collect bottles, go down to the neighborhood and collect all the bottles, and take them in and get bubble gum or whatever it was. You know, you get get something. That bottle was a guarantee that you get the money back. That you'd bring the bottle in, you get you get the money back. We have been given a deposit, guaranteeing the Holy Spirit is our deposit. That's the deposit we are getting, and the Holy Spirit will hold us until we are exchanged for that new body in Christ Jesus who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are in God's possession. To the praise of His glory. Wow. Wow. The Father trusted the Son so much that He sent Him to earth for our redemption. The Father and the Son trusted the Holy Spirit so much that He sent Him as our guarantee, as our redemption, as, 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 uh, as, our, as our, uh, yeah, our, our guarantee, our deposit that we are God's if we stay in Him. Hey, just because you took that bottle home doesn't mean you took it back in to get the money. You know, the people I was collecting the bottles from, they weren't getting any money back. And so, so there, there, there are some people that, are, that have accepted Jesus Christ that they are not exchanging that. They've accepted that, and they, God's sending the Holy Spirit, and they just say, well, I'm not going to do anything with it. Just because you've been accepted Jesus Christ doesn't mean you get to heaven. There has to be that exchange. The guarantee is there. It's up to you whether you cash that in. Whether you cash that in or not. God the Father uses the Holy Spirit to deliver the gifts and wisdom, gifts of wisdom and revelation. Think about that. We have the Holy Spirit. God trusts Him enough to give us wisdom. Some of us, He needs to give a lot more wisdom too. Huh? Here's what it says. Ephesians 1.17 I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, <laughs> may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know Him better. Know Him better. That wisdom thing doesn't, doesn't mean that I'll be able to do new math. <laughs> That's not what it's talking about. It's a wisdom of knowing God better. And when it comes to it, I'd rather know that than the new math. Let me clue you. Jesus relied on God the Father to raise him back to life. Think about that. Jesus, Jesus prayed in the garden that he'd rather not go through the situation he was going to have to go through. But not his will, but whose will? God's will. The Father's will. And he trusted God that he was going to raise him to life. Wow. Trusted that he was going to raise him to life. Here's what it says. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, he says, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you and the riches of his glorious inheritance, his glorious inheritance in his holy people. 
and his incomparable great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and sealed, seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Think about the power of raising someone from the dead. We say, well, Jesus did that. Well, Jesus is God. Huh? It's all the same. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, it's all in one. And we're supposed to be connected with them. And he has that power. And Jesus trusted him to do that. Can people trust you to do the things that you, that you say you're going to do? Oh, I'll pray for you. If you don't do it right then, it's probably not going to happen. Because if I don't do it right then, I will forget by the time I get home. I'll forget by the time I walk ten spaces. We have power. We need to do the things that we say we're going to do. God said, I will raise you from the dead. And he did. And because he did, we can sing like these songs, I'm going to walk out of the grave because you did. shouldn't have stopped now I can't get it going again yeah. and God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church I mean God is the model of holiness look at the second one God's love for us is the power of relational holiness holiness is not about what I should be doing or should not be doing it's not about the do's and the don'ts huh? holiness is, is about the love and grace and what God has already done for us what he's done for us we, we tend to forget that. Ephesians 1 describes God's love for us. Here's what we just looked at in, 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 in short. Blessed us with every spiritual blessing. God has done that with us. How come we, we, we forget that at times? He has blessed us with every, every spiritual blessing that we can think of. He has chosen us to be holy and blameless in His sight. He has chosen us. You know, whenever you played games and had to choose up sides, didn't you like it when someone called your name? God chose us. Before we even knit in our mother's wombs, He chose us. He has called us. And He called us to be holy and blameless. In love, He predestined us to be adopted. He wanted us to be part of the family. He required, he, he, that's, he, that's his, his, all He wants is for us to be a part of the family. His glorious grace, grace which He has freely given us in the one He loves. He gave us grace through what Jesus Christ did. We have redemption, for, redemption, forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. He lavished on us according to His good pleasure. Lavished, poured out, overflowing. God's love is the power that drives relational holiness. God's love is the power that drives it. So we have the model of holiness. We have God's love for us is the power of relational holiness. Number three, relational holiness is characterized by God's offer to partner with humans. You don't think about God partnering. He partners with us corporately. He partners with us as a church body. Uh, that's the first thing he does. There's, there's two. Uh, the, if he's got a corporate, then there must be one individual, right? Here it is. To equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. To equip his people for works. Huh? Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature. Wow. Get that again? He equips his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. The body, the corporate body here. Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature. Attaining to the whole measure of of the fullness of Christ, becoming the, what we're supposed to be in the very beginning. Uh -oh. If we have a corporate, we also have individually. Individually. I became a servant of, his, of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, his grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ. Think about it. 
We say, well, well, Paul had had that ability. I mean, Paul was very well educated. Let's, let's go beyond Paul. This could be anybody saying this. And it should be anybody saying this. I've told you, I do not like getting in front of people. I do not like being... A... You put me in a classroom, you won't get two words out of me. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I don't like having the attention. But God's power, God's grace enables us to... I've, I've preached to, to, to one person. <laughs> I've preached to hundreds of people. God has given us that grace, that individual. That's just not me. Some of you are teachers. Some of you are, are better scholars. Some of you are, are great theologians. Some of you are prayer warriors that, that, that others of us aren't. You have those gifts. God has given you those gifts. As part of the Holy Spirit, He loves us so much that He gives us those to, to, to not only enrich us, but to, to build Him up, but to build up the church, to build up the, the corporate body. Ephesians 4. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. You say, I haven't received the calling. Yes, you have. If you accepted Jesus Christ, you received a calling. I mean, I can think of one right off the bat. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every, every, every tribe, every, every, every tribe, every person, anybody that you can. Preaching and teaching in the name of Jesus. Huh? Baptizing in the name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We have all accepted that call. But you all have other callings. Some of you have gifts that, that, that we don't even know about. Uh, uh, that, that someone else has to even tell us sometimes that the, 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 the gift of, of um, hospitality that's not one of my gifts <laughs> that's why I married Joni huh? she has that gift she reminds me hey we need to do this we need to do that like, they can do it themselves huh? <laughs> the, the gift of, of encouragement again that's not one of my gifts I have to admit it. You know, that was not something I grew up with. That was not something that, that, that my, my parents dished out. And so, so I don't, don't even think about it. And it's definitely not something that they dish out in the military. <laughs> they'll dish out <laughs> the punishment. They'll dish out the slams, but they won't dish out encouragement. And so I have a hard time with that. And so let me tell you, if you get it from me, you better wear that like a badge. You know? <laughs> it's because I really had to remind myself to do it. And that's not that, that, that's not that you don't deserve it. Everybody deserves it. Everybody, but it's, it's one of those things that some people need encouragement. And they need to be built up. Others, that, 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 that they don't. They don't. I'm one of those that I, I don't like it. I, I don't like people to single me out for encouragement and, and be built up. Mine comes from a, an inside thing. That doesn't make me any better than anybody else. It just means that, that, that for me, my, uh, uh, my, my, I guess my self worth, it comes from what I can do with my hands. That, that's that's me. You know? uh, uh, some people need that encouragement. Some people it makes it sound like I'm belittling that. I'm not. It's, I'm not. But we have all been called, and we need to live up to the calling that we've been given. It says. As a prisoner for the Lord, there again, don't get hung up on prisoner. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. Uh, apparently, I shouldn't do that either. Be completely humble and gentle and be patient, bearing with one another in love. Wow. This partnership moves us from the do's and don'ts uh, to honoring and serving with God. Finish up with the living well. That's number four. Dr. Hoffman gives four principles in, in this one. And so here, here it goes. And we're going to hit a lot of scripture, and I'm going to try to run through it real quick. The first principle, acquiring a divine view of others. Think about that for a second. Requiring, acquiring, acquiring a divine view of others. How do you see others? How do you see those less fortunate? How do you see those that are very well off? How do you see the drug addict that you pass by on the street? What do you think about? 
What do you think about when you when you walk by somebody who's begging for money? Acquire a divine view of others. How are we to see others? The same way that God sees. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. No place in that verse does it say, for God chose only those in Weipe, Idaho before the creation. Or in the Wesleyan church in Weipe, Idaho. Because there are people in Weipe, Idaho that some people might think don't deserve it. And yet God says every human being deserves it. Makes no difference what they've done. Makes no difference where they're at. Makes no difference uh, Makes no difference whether they've accepted me yet or not. I have chosen them. I have predestined them. I have offered my family to them. And if I can offer my family to them, then you, my family, should be willing to accept them. Hmm. Sometimes it's hard to bring another family member in. I know I, I relate a lot to goats. That's just because they're easy to relate to. <laughs> we brought in a, a, a goat this week. And as much as he was trying to be friendly to our six goats, they wanted nothing to do with him. He just wanted to hang with the other goats. Where he's at, at his normal place, he's with a bunch of chickens. Chickens and goats. But you get the idea... He, he would move towards them and they would take off. And he would, but once they've settled in, they've kind of accepted one another. He's an outsider. He's nothing like my goats. Not even the same breed. Not even the same, uh, the same denomination. Not, not, even the same, not even the same breed. <laughs> He's definitely not the same denomination. Yeah. <laughs> I've lost it now. God has chosen all of us. He wants everybody to be part of the family, even those that we think that we think are outsiders, because they're not outsiders. They're family. Anybody have a black sheep in their family? Talking about goats and sheep. You may be the black sheep if you can't think of any. Huh? Do you get the idea that that even the black sheep are part of God's family? He chose us in Him before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight. Being completely humble and gentle. Be patient. Bearing with one another in love. Bearing with that person who keeps laughing at you when you talk to him about Jesus. Bearing with that person who, who you can't understand why they're still nipping at the bottle. Bearing with that person who is still down in the gutter because they've been uh, 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 drugged up so bad. Bearing with that person. Bearing with everyone. How? <laughs> with love. Humble. And being gentle. humble and gentle. Humility. Recognizing that everyone is created in God's image. Everyone is created in God's image. Everyone deserves respect and value. And that is how God sees them. And if our God sees everyone that way, we should see everyone that way. We shouldn't put the distinguishing mark. Well, because you don't, or you live over there, or you, you don't have this, or you don't have the education, or you don't have the funding, you can't be. Ye, they are. God has chosen them. And we need to see them the same way that God does. Wow. Everyone has insights, gifts, and graces to share with one another. Even those that are not in the church right now. They have insights. And they have graces. I think of Robert last week. Spilling his guts to us. Things that probably most of us in here. Have never had to deal with. And yet he's still a child of the king. Still a child of the king. Second principle. Relationships have eternal purpose and meaning. The son's relationship with the father, that, that it's because of that that we have redemption. Uh, the relationship between the father and the Holy Spirit, that we are kept. Uh, and, and it's through Jesus, the redemption and the, and the Holy Spirit that we're kept, that we have access to the father. And guess what? The father is eternal. And we are his and in him, and we have an eternal relationship with him. 
It's not just a temporary thing. It's, 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 it, it, as long as we stay with Him and stay, uh, continue to be in His grace, we continue to be in that holiness and there's a time coming when we will walk in holy way with Him. We will walk eternally with Him. Wow. There's also a relationship of mutual respect. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us and gave Himself up for us. We should be giving ourselves up for others. We should be doing for others. As a fragrant offering, a sacrifice to God. Here's what Paul says, verse five, or chapter 5. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. You're probably knowing where this is going to go. This, this, is, this is a preachable one. We haven't got the time to preach it today, but boy, it's preachable. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. That's where most people quit. Most husbands quit. Keep going. <laughs> For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. If we, if we, if, if we uh, uh, devoted our lives to our men, as we devoted our lives to our wives, as Christ did for the church, how much greater would our relationship be? So I've got a good relationship. No, no, no. How much greater would your relationship be? If we work the same way with our marriage, at Christ's work with the marriage of the church. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. We always like to focus on the wives. Submit to your husbands. Christ submitted to the church so great that he gave his life up. But it doesn't say that. Ah, but it does, doesn't it? Love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Love this To make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to preserve her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless in the same way husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies he who loves his wife loves himself after all no one ever hated their own body but they fed and care some of us feed too much but they feed and care for their body just as christ does the church for we are all members of his body his father and his mother and be united to his wife the two will become one flesh this is a profound mystery he says but i am talking about christ in the church however each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself and the wife must respect her husband children obey your parents and the lord for this is right that's usually where that verse stops too huh? honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with a promise so that you may go well, so it may be well, so it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Guess what? There's more to it. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Huh? What does that mean? Don't belittle them. Don't don't ridicule them. Build them up. Lift them up as we're supposed to be doing. Instead of bringing them up in training and instruction of the Lord, slaves obey your earthly masters for respect and fear. A sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them, not only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly, as if you were serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each of you, each one for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that, that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven. And there's no favoritism with him. Wow. Mutual respect. Husbands to wives, wives to husbands, children to parents, workers to their bosses. Wow. We have a shared purpose. Ephesians 4 3. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. It says in four, chapter 4 So Christ himself gave the apostles and the prophets, the evangelists, and pastors and teachers. This would go a whole lot faster if everything was working. To equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. That's that shared. If we have those gifts that God has given us that, that the Holy Spirit keeps enabling us and we keep them to ourselves, how does that help the church? We've got a prayer warrior, but they won't tell us who it is. <laughs> well, how can I contact that prayer warrior and say, hey, we need you to pray for this person? Are they just supposed to know? Well, or how about those people with, with that gift of, of uh, hospitality? 
if if no one steps up and says, hey, I can do that, then we never know. And all of a sudden we give it to somebody who doesn't have that gift like me. And somebody comes to the house, I just shove a pair of beans in front of them and say, hey, have at it, you know. Get the idea. We need to do this to build up the body of Christ. Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. And we have so many of them today. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. For him, the whole body, joined and held together with every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. There are also behaviors that serve and edify others. Thoughts, words, and behaviors that serve and edify others. We keep talking about. So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Wow. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way of the life you learn. When you heard about Christ and were taught in Him in accordance you are taught with regard to the former way of life to put off the old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds. Wow. And to put on the new self, created to be like God, created to be like God, created to be like God, I can't get that stressed enough, in true righteousness and holiness. Commit ourselves to the thoughts. That's what he's saying. Our thoughts should do nothing but edify people. They shouldn't be uh, to think about bringing them down. How about words? How do we speak? Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful to building others up. Whoa. Well, that person doesn't look like me. That person doesn't smell like me. Huh? Let me tell you, when those guys come off the oil rigs over in the Dakotas and Montana, and they, they would show up at the church, guess what? Sometimes they showed up in their clothes, their work clothes. Oil smells terrible do you want to know something that's where they needed to be i don't care what a person smells like i don't care what a person is wearing i don't care i don't i don't i, I prefer they be wearing something because i want our minds to focus on what we're supposed to be focusing on right but but you you, you get to, I, i've had people say, well they can't come here because they don't wear the appropriate clothes well, i didn't know there was appropriate clothes should they be in a tunic? Huh? Well, they, they, can't, they can't sing because they can't carry a tune. <laughs> well, brother, let me talk to you. <laughs> well, they don't sing the same songs we do. We don't sing the same songs that Jesus' people sang at that time. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only that which is helpful and building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. We talk bad about somebody, we're grieving the Holy Spirit. If we're grieving the Holy Spirit, who else are we grieving? Jesus Christ and God. I don't know about you, but I really don't want to grieve God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. Speaking to, speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. I can't sing. It didn't say you had to say it out loud. It said sing and make music from your heart. I sing all the time. I make stuff up. I make it up even on when we do services here. But, you know, I, I'm out in the barn. I, I sing, I talk, I make things up as I go along. Hmm? Oh, Mr. Goat, you shouldn't be here. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> S 
sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If we are constantly singing and praising and lifting up songs of, of praise to Him, then we can't be knocking people down. We are to build one another up, not break them down, not knock them down. Some people, I, 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 I think I've told you this before, I have an uncle that's uh, just a few years older than I am. And not proud of this fact, but as, as, a, as younger kids and we all ran around together, we used to tell him how stupid he was, how dumb he was. To the point where you would hear him say that to himself. I'm not stupid. I'm not dumb. How hurtful are our words? How hurtful are our words? We are to build one another up, not beat each other down. Commit ourselves to thoughts, words, and behaviors that serve and edify others. Wow. I encourage you to read Ephesians 4 and 5 again. Just look at it, because that's what it tells you. Yeah. Lastly, rely on the power and enabling of God. I'm not going to read through this, but here, here it is. Finally, be strong in the Lord and His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. And that's where I'm going to leave that. Put on the full armor of God. If you put on the full armor of God, then we'll be able to stand against anything that the world gives it sends against us. We're able to stand against anything that, that is set against us. And we'll stand, and if we've got on that full armor, guess what? We will feel like we represent the King of Kings. When I would put on a military uniform, and it said U.S. Air Force on it. I felt like I represented the U.S. If I put on rags, I don't feel like I represent too many people. But if we put on the full army of God and do the things that God has called us to do and, 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 and embrace all of that, then we will stand taller and represent Him. And if we're representing Him, our actions, our words, our thoughts, everything that we do should be focused on Him and holiness. Holiness is love. Holiness is love. It's not the do's and don'ts of watching TV or not watching TV or the length of your dress or wearing what long sleeves or short sleeves or whatever the case may be. Holiness is sharing God's love the way He deserved it, the way He designed it to be shared. That's that practical that's that relational holiness. That relational holiness. Whew. With that, yeah. See, now it's working. Wouldn't you know it? We'll talk about social holiness next week. Why don't you stand and we'll close this morning? Father God, we do thank you. I thank you. I thank you that that Paul wrote to the Ephesian church, and so much of what he has written here reminds us why we should be holy. The things that you have done for us. You've adopted us. You've claimed us. You sent your Son for us. You sent the Holy Spirit to be with us. You love us that much. We should show that love to everyone we come in contact with because you love everyone. You love everyone. Even those that go to their death in sin, you loved them so much that you sent your one and only Son to die for them. It was up to them to accept. Would you help us to love those we come in contact with, no matter who they are, no matter what they are, no matter how they smell or look, because they are children of the King. Father, guide us and direct us throughout this week. Bring us back to your appointed hour. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless. Have a great week. Hope to see you Saturday.